Well, last time there was a meeting and the colony is officially starving, which makes it difficult to do physical tasks and the physical skill increases is reduced by one, which means the only thing there is for us to do is come help in geoponics. And I guess we'll help mom shovel the dirt. You grab a wheelbarrow from the barn where Cal keeps his pet Dilly Pillar to find Cal standing over an empty trunk. Socks is nowhere to be seen. Where is she? Cal sniffles and wipes his face before turning to you. She's gone, he mumbles. I came in to see if she would eat some cornbread and she's... She's gone. Look, there's a hole in her box and everything, he says, gesturing to the trunk. Sure enough, it looks like Socks must have chewed her way out. Cal is on the verge of tears again. She doesn't know how to survive on her own, he wails. What if she starves? What if something eats her? What if she's scared? It wasn't safe for her here. She was getting really big, Cal mumbles, rubbing his eyes. She was probably gonna get found anyway. He closes the lid of the box and rests his head against it. I'm so sorry, little girl, he whispers. I tried, I really did. I miss you so much. Oh, Cal. <laughs> hmm. There. Yay, that's enough. <laughs> and I got three stars. And now that it's the last season of Pollen, there's bits of pollen floating all through the air. And I feel like I should probably check on my dad. Your dad throws you a full canteen. Here, he says, you need to stay hydrated and rested if you're not eating as much as you should. And I should also help you because I know you aren't either. Someone broke into the gardens last night and stole some green tomatoes. What a waste. Not only were they probably too bitter to eat, but now you don't have seeds to replant. Your mom is furious. Your mom calls everyone for an all-hands meeting. She looks grim as she surveys the group. All right, farmers, listen up. Based on my projections, geoponics should have been producing 70% of the colony's food by the end of our third year, she says. The rest was to be provided by stored rations in hydroponic algae greenhouses aboard the stratospheric. The agriculturists all nod. Everyone knows where this is going. Because we lost so much of our hydroponic equipment in the wormhole incident, we, as well as 90% of our soil and bacteria cultures, we're nowhere near the production we need to be at. We also had hoped to have domesticated at least one native crop, but as we found from the pixie beans last year, we have some more work to do on that front. She looks every one of you in the eyes. You're my people, my family. I'm not going to sugarcoat this for you. The colony is going to fail if we don't get a handle on this agricultural problem. People will die. You feel a pit in your stomach. That's not just from the hunger. You can't imagine someone as strong as your mother just wasting away. But last time she did, which means we'll just have to work harder in the field this time around. Your mother pulls up a hollow screen outlining work plans for this season. You'll feel your own hollow palm pulse as you receive a copy. There's so much life here on this planet, your mother says, but it seems to fight us at every turn. I've sent soil chemistry analysis to your palms, courtesy of geranium. The soil needs to be conditioned extensively to support earth crops. We need to cultivate more vertumnin crops in partnership with the foragers. We need to salvage what we can of hydroponics and get that up and running by the end of the year. Your mother would never stoop to being beaten, but you can see the lines of fatigue around her eyes. It'll take a superhuman amount of work to turn this around, but it is still possible, she says. You are the people who will save this colony. I believe in us and the miracles we can perform here. Thank you for being here to do the work. Now, let's get out there. We got plus one food. That's better than nothing. Oh, wait. There.
And now it's dust season, and I guess we'll run around really quick and see if there's anything around here to collect. There, a yellow flower. And mom was saying that we needed the soil stuff, so maybe I'll work in some xenobotany again? You and your dad are hard to work at the geoponics lab, trying to find ways to squeeze more nutrition out of what you can grow here. It's a long-term solution, but everyone is starving now. You can't help but feel you'd be more helpful out in the fields. Okay, then that's definitely what I'll be doing next time. Three. Ah! Nope. Four. Five. Eight. There we go. It's time for Virginalia, the yearly midsummer celebration when the colony gives thanks for its good fortune. Well, it would be, but as you file into the main square, you can't help but notice that the feast table is nearly empty. What Anne lacked in resources, she made up with care. The dishes are lovingly plated, soy cakes glisten, steam rises from the bun stuffed with mints, and there are great pictures of vegetable broth rendered out from even the most inedible food scraps. There's a neat stack of sugar cubes for dessert. Whole sugar! What a luxury! In an underwhelming feast, that'll be the highlight. Governor Utica's welcoming speech this year is short. Her frail body trembles as she welcomes you all to the Virginalia with a dry, whispery voice that has to be helped off stage. Like all of you, she has been feeling the effects of the famine. Everyone clears away the chairs for the annual competition. Which one do you participate in this year? I don't know. Maybe I should save my energy for the fields. You join your parents in the stands for the talent show. After the festivities, the whole colony takes a few days off for a break. Well, except for geoponics, and the foragers, and the kitchens. And everyone who uses the break from their usual work to help out in the places that didn't close. Okay, it's not really a break, but you try to take it easy anyway. And now it's Midnest, and we will be definitely working out there with Mom. Mom was pretty into dirt last time we helped her. It's hot today. You've been moving wheelbarrows of dirt from one greenhouse to another. Inside the greenhouse, it's nice and cool with the mist spraying down from the ceiling at regular intervals. Outside, the twin blazing balls of fire in the sky are unrelenting. The greenhouses are so far apart. One at the top of the steep hill. The track you've been walking between them hazes in the heat. But my mom and everyone else have been working hard, so so should I. You're tough. You can take it. Blinded by the sweat in your eyes, you push the wheelbarrow up the hill again and again. It feels good to work so hard. You bump into your parents. Your mom takes one look at you and rolls her eyes. What were you thinking? Look at you. Drink some water. Hydrate. She pushes her canteen into your hands and doesn't stop staring until you take a drink. Your dad looks concerned. You feel sheepish, but insists you're fine. You're fine! But you admit the top the water was a good idea. But I need to help you two as much as I can. And that's not enough. Uh, no, that one has to be there. What else? I could change this one. Ah, I'm just one off. There. And that's enough. And it's a three star too. Are you two doing okay? Your mom tosses you a soy ration from her pocket. Here, Solana, eat up. You need your strength. You do too. You need to keep it. And you're right, I do need to stay hydrated, unlike last time. So maybe I'll go ahead and work on the farm this time. You're so happy when you see new green shoots poking out from the ground. 
It makes it that much worse when you return the next day and find them withered and dry. What's wrong with this planet? That's it. You can't work anymore. You lie down in the middle of the barren field and stare up at the sky. In Earth holovids, you'd expect to see vultures circling overhead. But it's just the twin suns of Vertumna beating down on you mercilessly. After a few minutes of sulking, you get back to work. This sucks. Your dad is a total nerd when it comes to crunching statistics about the colony's food production. Through him, you learn that the average person eats approximately 200 kilograms of dry rations every day. That works out to about 2,000 calories a day. There are about 100 colonists to feed at 2,000 calories a day. So in a year, you need to produce about... Ah, well, no matter how many times you think it over, the math is grim. Even with all of your hard work, geoponics is producing far, far less than the colony needs to survive. It all feels so hopeless. Knowing that all of your hard work still hasn't been enough, well, it breaks something in you. Hunger and desperation boil together in your stomach as you work like bitter acid. You're working so hard and you're still starving. You deserve to eat. You need to eat. If you don't eat, you're not going to be able to work as hard as you need to. So when it's just you and a wheelbarrow of anemic looking carrots, I, I can't steal it. Everyone needs that food. That would be selfish. It takes an extraordinary amount of willpower, but you get all the carrots weighed and delivered to the kitchens. This is food for everyone. It's not a lot of food for 100 people, but at least you'll all starve together. And that did give us one plus food for the colony. No, why do I keep being just one off? That's really annoying. Here. Woo! A super goal and three stars. And I guess we'll get back to the fields next time.